Well, uh, hello, nice people of Ember London. I came from Planet Thoughtbot to uh, talk a bit about uh, building CRUD interfaces with Ember, which is something I had done a little bit of research on lately, and I thought I would share with you. But first, I'm going to do the compulsory um, definition slide, where I remind everyone that CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Destroy. And it's just a fancy term for all these interfaces we have seen many times, both as users and developers, that revolve around a, um, a list of records where you can just create a new record or uh, read an existing one, update it, destroy it. And well, at the end of the day, all if more is well, at the end of the day, most if not all the applications we build are crowd at heart hopefully with a layer of UX on top so that users don't have to be, so that users can think about their own objectives and not about these pesky records that we developers like to think about. And something about CRUDs is that being so important and being so present in all our applications, they're also a very good way to approach a new framework and start learning the ropes because you will, you will uh, find primitives and common idioms, and you will learn to put them together to build applications. So recently, I ran a workshop at my office at Thoughtball London, because I happened to be the, the resident Ember advocate there, and I wanted to introduce my colleagues to the framework. So I created, I created this simple curl application, because they are all uh, Ruby and Rails developers, or at least they're very familiar with it, so it will be I thought it would be easy to um, translate their skills to, to Ember by using a similar, um, similar kind of application they're used to build with Rails. And I built, preparing this, uh, preparing this framework, I built a very simple app, very much like the one I just showed, with a list of uh, records. And then you can click on new or edit and find a form very much like this one where you can just create a new record. And you can save it, or you can mm, discard what you were doing and cancel and go back to the, to the place uh, whence you came. And also for completeness, I added a bit of uh, server-side validation, because if you do it correctly and your API supports it, Ember can deal with it uh, for free. Ember Data can deal with, with it for free. And it's very simple to use uh, to show validation errors on your app. And it was using this feature, then I realized something was amiss. I came to create a new record. I entered an invalid, uh, an invalid uh, value. I, I saved. It gave me a validation error. So far, so good. But then I click Cancel. And I came back to the list. And the value was still there. It hadn't been dropped from the store. I had code in place to drop it from the store when transitioning away in that case. But for some reason, it hadn't kicked in. The value hadn't been persisted, so therefore, it didn't have an ID. And when refreshing the browser, the value was gone because it was just on the store. So I was scratching my head, thinking what could possibly go wrong. The code I had at that moment for dealing with that case when transitioning in a way and not having saved the record was this. And for some reason, delete record wasn't working. And I don't know, I read the documentation many times and I couldn't see what was wrong. Eventually, I saw I could just do an unload record instead and it worked. And I, well, I thought it was probably something I was doing wrong or some gotcha I wasn't aware of. But it annoyed me a bit and I did make a point of making a note of that. I actually put together a gist on GitHub where I explained this and I uploaded all the files, all the important files that my application was, was using, which were basically the router, the routes, and the templates, just to have as material for the workshop. And well, I didn't think this was going to go very far. I didn't think I was going to find much to, to make notes about, except that between that and 50 versions later, I realized that maybe I have enough material to come here and talk to all of you about <laughs> other interesting things I have found while building the simplest of the applications with Ember. Incidentally, by the way, the problem I was having with the lead record 
turned out to be a bug that I took the time to isolate and uh, create an issue for on Ember Data's issue tracker. And it was eventually uh, fixed on Ember Data 2.5. But this has been there since Ember Data 2 Beta 1, which covers more or less the space of eight months. So if you have an application affected by this bug, you do delete record on something that may have a validation error, bear in mind that that may not be doing what you think it is doing. Anyway, I'm not going to go through everything in the application. And by the way, before I forget, uh, I'm going to give a link to the gist at the end. Uh, I'm not going to explain everything in the application because I don't have time for that. But I'm going to explain a few other gotchas I found. The application, by the way, is, as I said, as simple as possible. So it only has one model. And it only has, this model only has one attribute that is a simple string. And I'm doing server-side validation, so I expect that the API will handle this for me and will return things well, like this JSON API error when I'm sending, a, I'm sending bad data in some way. So starting with actually building the app, uh, one of the first things you have to think when building a new app or a new feature in the app is what paths, what URLs is going to use. And coming as I, as I am coming from a Ruby on Rails background, I settled for uh, a series of URLs that Ruby and Rails developers will be, uh, will be familiar with. You go to slash lines. By the way, line is the name of the model. You go to slash lines, and, uh, and you see a list of the records. You go to slash lines slash new, and you see the form to create new records. And well, I was deciding on this, and I created these paths. Well, I mm, declared these paths on the router very much like this. So I had a parent root called lines, and um, within it, nested within it, I had uh, all the possible, uh, all the possible rules that I could find in the application. And after some experimentation, I realized that I didn't really need to declare the index root. Because in Ember, as soon as you start nesting, it will create an index root for you. So if you declare a root, it will give you that root. But if you declare that root and you start nesting, if, it, if that nesting is empty, you will get also a root.index subroot, which makes perfect sense. Because in this second case, lines is not actually a root you can land on. So in fact, if you try to transition to it, you will land on lines.index, which is a much more sensible place to land when you are trying to reach the, the space. So that is the interesting thing I found the root. I'm going to move on to the templates, and specifically to the form, which is the most interesting template in this extremely simple app. If you are a beginner who has just read the, the, the guides, just the tutorial and a few pages on the guides, you will probably implement this, uh, this form with a template very much like this one, uh, which will have an input for each attribute, and we'll have a button that clicking on it, you will trigger the save action and save the record. And well, you will have a link to take you back to the list of records. And presumably, you will run some code behind the scenes, as I was doing earlier, to make sure that the data there is correctly dis uh, discarded when you're canceling. But there's something here that is a bit annoying. And it is that if a user lands here, goes to name, enter something, and presses enter, nothing is going to happen. Because well, the user probably expects that the record will be saved. But we are saving on pressing the button, not on submitting the form. And what we should be doing is wrapping this on a form and saving the record on submission of the form instead, instead of on clicking the button. Something else that can be done to improve this, uh, this template is actually render the validation errors. As I showed earlier, this app, can, uh, this app supports them. And as long as the API uh, supports them too and responds with validation errors in a way that your uh, adapter and your serializer can understand, them, can understand them, Ember Data will give them to you for free just by looking into model.errors the name of the attribute for each one of the attributes. And something interesting, by the way, about validation errors is that normally we think about them 
as linked to specific attributes, but they can be also linked to the object as a whole, what uh, I think they call object level validation errors. So you may want to also check if you are having any of those by checking model.errors.base, which is a pseudo attribute where Ember data will put um, these errors that don't actually belong to any attribute, again assuming that your API is communicating them back uh, in a way that your serializer understands. Uh, that's enough with the templates. I'm moving now on to the roots. Um, well, the first thing you normally do when creating a root is uh, implementing the model, the model hook. And this is super simple, but I still find, since I started doing Ember back in 1.10 or something like that, I still find myself do, sometimes doing uh, this dot store dot find instead of find record. Because even though the old uh, finders like all or get by ID have been removed, find still exists and it still works pretty much in the same way that find record does. So it's very easy to use that one instead of find record. There are reasons why find is, uh, is there. I'm not going to go into those, but it's useful to remember that we really should be using find record instead, as well as uh, all, the new, um, all the new finders that have been there since uh, Ember 1.13. On with the root, let's go back to the, the form for an instant. <coughs> this form is super simple. If you save, the save action only needs to get the record that has probably been sent along with the action, uh, save it, and then on resolution of the, of the promise, you transition away and you're done. The cancel action is the one that gave me trouble when I started all this. And it's one that uh, deserves looking a bit more in detail how it should be implemented. So when we are canceling a creation or, a, or an update of a record, when we transition away, or before we do, we should first grab the working record, then we should discard all the changes on it, and if it is a newly created record, we should also remove it from the store, which my code was failing to do earlier. And then we can finally leave by making sure that we are cleaning after ourselves. And I, explain, I will explain in a moment what this means. First, I have seen code out there in the wild that uses deactivate here, and we should be using the will transition uh, hook instead. Deactivate doesn't, doesn't fire if you move from a root to the same root with a different model, which will happen if, for example, you're showing the edit form along with a list of records, and then while editing one, you click on editing the other you'll be moving from the edit root to the edit root, changing the model, but the activate, the activate wouldn't fire. Will transition will fire there and will ensure that you clean after yourself properly. Uh, now that we know which hook to use, we need to grab the existing record, well, the current record. And these seem to be the two accepted ways of doing this after my asking around a bit. You either go through the controller and get the model. And by the way, here I'm assuming that I'm not doing this on the controller, which I could be doing. But since I wanted to simplify the application as much as possible, I did all this in the router instead. And the second way to do this is uh, using model 4 and feeding it the current root name. The way I started doing this when I first started doing Ember was like this, because I didn't know better. And first, apart from and well, the difference with this here, by the way, is that I am feeding um, a string literal instead of a, well, a string literal that will have to update if I move things around, I change names. And also, if I misspell something like I actually did here the first time I wrote it, which where I said line instead of lines, misspelling strings tends to be the kind of error that's a bit more difficult to track down. If I misspell <coughs> model 4, I sell I said, for example, model fro. Uh, JavaScript will be quick to tell me that such a function doesn't exist. And when I feed, I feed strings to places, you never know where that is going to end up. Something else I have seen in the while for uh, retrieving the current model is using this.current model, which is a private API 
and we shouldn't be using. <coughs> so now that we have the current model, the next thing we have to do is discard the changes. Can somebody tell me what's the correct way to discard the changes that will work both if we are discarding a newly created record and an existing record? Well done. Rollback attributes. That's correct. Rollback attributes. <laughs> Which is something I really didn't know when I first started with all this. In fact, all this information didn't come into the documentation until Ember 2, um, where the behavior, the behavior when the record is new was properly documented. It hadn't been documented before. And in fact, something that annoys me slightly about rollback attributes is the name. Because if you are rolling back attributes on an existing record, then the name works well. But if you're rolling back attributes on a newly recreated or <coughs> on a newly created record that is also going to be dropped from the store, then rollback attributes, in my personal opinion, doesn't quite, quite convey the same significance. And that's probably one of the reasons why I missed it for so long. And instead I was running code like the one I was running earlier. Uh, but well, it's on the guides, it's on the API reference now, and it seems to be the accepted way to do that. So this is what we should be doing instead. So now we have grabbed the record, now we are uh, undoing the, the changes, and that includes dropping the record if it was new. And now, another question for the audience. Can somebody tell me one last thing we should be doing here? And well done. <laughs> exactly. We really, really should be calling super because we are using a framework hook. And if you don't believe me, believe Robert Jackson, aka RWJ. Quoting him, you should always call super whenever you implement any framework hook. Period. End of story. Even if you know it doesn't need to be done, you should do it. And this is because you could be using a mixing that implements the same framework hook. And if you don't call super on your code, the framework hook won't be called in the mixing. And that has already happened to me. And things won't work, and you won't know why it is not working. So bear it in mind. This is the correct way, I think, to implement uh, this feature. And if you think differently, please let me know, because I really need to, I really want to know these things. And that's really as far as I'm going to go. If you want to see other details and other little things I found on my research, as, full, as well as the full uh, source code of my little CRUD app, you can go to this uh, URL, which is basically the um, shortened link to the gist. And apart from that, if there's anything you disagree, I would be, I am all ears. Thank you very much.